So a little bit something different today. What I got here is a, a beam from a barn from uh, 1914. I believe this is going to be pine or, or poplar. We're going to do today, uh, Leanne wants to make a top out of it for a Singer sewing machine base. I know, cliche, but I don't know if the wood's too far gone. But uh, what I'll do is I'll put it together and probably use some, some resin to, to stabilize some parts of it. All right, so what I need to do is cut this down. The tabletop needs to be about 19 by 27 inches. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down to 28 inches and see if we can get 20 inches across. So one inch over so I'd be able to cut off the ends when the, uh, in case I gotta make it a little bit smaller. All right, so let's get to cutting. The good thing about this is we're not going to plane this down. We're just going to leave it like this. We're just going to sand it down because we want this rough texture. You can see where it still has the markings from the sawmill in it. So, And this is just going to be a rough cut. So. change of plan this pine that I put up or that I cut just a second ago apparently is wet I don't understand how it got wet it was up under my shelf or my sh uh, shed over there but yeah it's pretty wet I mean it's beautiful but I can't do it so Leanne came down and decided that uh, I milled up this pecan and it's about two inches thick uh, I milled it up about two years ago. It's at about 10%, which is a little bit more than I would want it to be, but we're going to use this for the shelf. So I need two pieces off of here at 28 inches. So. Oh wow, look at that. That's going to be pretty. Look at that. This is the other side. Here's that checking I said. I'm going to make a large cutting board out of this. Just a full, full grain cutting board. To get this to 19 inches, I've got to cut this piece at 9.5 inches and this piece at 9.5 inches. And I've already marked these. Just need to find out where the mark is at because I don't know where it put it. I don't know. I guess I need to remark it. Oh, there's the mark. Okay. Now, if it ends up being a little bit larger, it's okay. So, and that'll be the line I have to cut on that one. So I need to do the same thing to this. I need to cut these both down to there. Yeah, now we've got it flat. What I got to do now is just glue this up and then we'll, we can start getting it all down how it's supposed to be. But first I need to open this glue up because it is 
I don't use my glue very often, you know that. Oh, shoot. <laughs> all right, we decided to fill in the voids with black resin, but first I need to blow all the dirt out of there. I'll be right back. Prepping this is just as important as when you pull when you pour the resin so you got to make sure that if you have holes like i do right down here on the back side from where this one goes through that you plug it up and make sure it doesn't leak we're going to use a two to one resin and we are also going to use some of this black onyx all right so this is medium set this is going to set a little bit faster let me, I was going to use fast, but So there's all these bug trails with the dirt in it. So I have to go through and get all that out. And I use this little dental tool. Do yourself a favor before you start finishing this. Use the compressed air or something to blow off the heavy dust and then wipe it down with acetate or denatured alcohol. I'm gonna use some acetate. After a few minutes, you wipe all the excess off. So we really like the patina of the rusty on here. So what we're doing is just going to take the uh, air pressure and take off all the, the dust. Alright, and all I'm doing is I'm going to put a uh, oil-based polyurethane for interior use on here. <laughs> 